Um, every relationship has been different. Um, this one in particular, I decided I was going to wait because I just heard about his reputation, you know, and I just n needed to see who he was. What's you up, know? it's Lip say Service. I'm Angela Yee. I'm Gigi McGuire. I'm Larry. And we have Sabrina Parr with us. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Thanks for asking. But you look amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, you really <laughs> thank do. You, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now, we did get a chance to see the screener for Behind Every Man. So I, I haven't even seen it yet. <laughs> oh, you haven't? Oh, really? No, I'm going to watch it with the rest of the world on Saturday. It was very interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we learned a lot and about I think, you. Yeah. That, that was the goal. That's the goal. Because <laughs> I do feel like, you know, when you showed up and you were engaged to Lamar Odom, people definitely were like, okay, what's the motive here? What's going on with her? Who is she? Who is she? Yeah. But I do feel like it did give us some good insight just into like your upbringing, who you are as a person and all the struggles that you've gone through to make you who you are today. Absolutely. Um, I was just honored to have been chosen because during that relationship, I would always say like, what is wrong with everybody? Like, they don't even know me. They have no idea, you know, who I am and, you know, that I am supposed to be in this position. And so I think the show really showcased a lot of those answers, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, and it was just a great opportunity. Is it kind of bittersweet now since we know that y'all are not together and Lamar is pretty much obviously all through that uh, documentary, if you want to call it? Um, you know, to be honest, it doesn't take away from the excitement that I feel about my story, because it's really my story. It sucks yeah. that we can't be promoting it together because we created it together. You know, obviously I was chosen for the show because I was behind him at one point, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I kind of like, my heart just kind of goes out to him because it's like, oh, this is another thing we did together that now we have to do separately. So, but I've just really been trying to focus on, you know, this story is about me, you know, and um, I'm excited to see you know, what my mom had to say, you know, because we really had to push to get her on there. Oh, that was sad. Um, yeah. Oh, don't tell me that. <laughs> I don't no, know. I'm just saying yeah. certain parts was like she was tearing, you know, it made you tear up a little just seeing some of that. She cried, you know, that she kind of had to get coached through some parts, but I can only imagine. I mean, my, my mom has been through a lot. So. And so have you. Yes. <laughs> with her, without her. Um, so we are both on the other side of it. So that's the good thing. Mm -hmm. People don't really know why you guys broke up. Like we just saw it happen and we saw that you were no longer together. And then we saw he said you were holding his social media accounts hostage. Like what was the end I think of it? he's still saying that. Um, <laughs> he actually just told me that we interviewed him. I interviewed him on my morning show. And he told me that you still have his uh, socials and everything. Okay. Um, so, you know, I am allowing Lamar to create whatever narrative he wants to create. Honestly, you know, um, I didn't want to get into the back and forth thing. You know, I, I started a little bit, just showed a few things of what was on my end. And then I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to allow my page, my personality, my actions, to show who I am and where my energy really is, you know? And I think that over the last couple of weeks, I've done that. Um, in regards to your question, Angela, um, it just didn't work out, you know? I don't want to speak on specifics because then it will get into a back and forth. And I just feel like I'm moving forward. Um, there's a lot of things that I could have responded to that I'm continuing to not respond to. You know, but I will say this, like in regards to his social media, like anyone who gets hacked or feels like they don't have control over their page, Instagram has a great support system where you can just <laughs> contact them and just get something new. You know, you can get a new email password, whatever it is. So if him and his team have not figured that out because they believe that I have something, then maybe they might need a different team because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said he, him and his manager both said it's linked to your emails because I asked him, I'm like, aren't you posting and things like that? And he said, yeah, you know, 
I can't change the password. I'm logged in, but it goes straight to her emails. We've tried to contact. And then he even kind of solicited like anybody that works for Instagram or Twitter, if you could reach out to me, I would love for you to help because she's definitely holding it hostage. Well, I'll say this. If I had access to his page, guys, I would have took a lot of stuff down a long time ago. OK, mm -hmm. um, especially the video that's blatantly disrespecting me. Let's just be honest, you know, like if right. I had control over anything on his page, anything disrespectful to Sabrina would have been gone. That's all I'm going to say. And I hope whatever what? struggles they're having, they figure it out soon. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he's making that up? Attention. It's a storyline to run with. Um, and maybe he truly does believe that. I mean, I, I haven't talked to him. Mm -hmm. You know, he may really believe that. I have access to it. I just don't know a woman who will have access to that page that would allow disrespect to be happening. You know, um, with the snap mm -hmm. of a, a click of a button, I could shut the whole thing down if I had access to it. Um, but also, all I can say is I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't. If I tried to log into his page right now, it'll literally show his phone number, and whatever email address that has been changed. Obviously, throughout our duration right. of our relationship, I had access to everything at one point. You know, um, that's kind of normal, I think. When, um, mm -hmm. and him as well, you know, he knew how to get right into my phone. But now, hold um, on. I don't know if that, because my man ain't got no access to I'm not to going shit. that far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, in, in our relationship. Right, okay. Um, I, think, I think Lamar was just kind of used to people doing certain things for him. And so I kind of just, replace that and just step into that role. Um, he's also not very social media savvy. So um, a lot of times I would have to help him find DMs, post certain things. You know, he would do a lot of contracts with people that involved having to post, having to at people, tag them. He didn't know how to do those things. So, um, and then he forgets a lot of his logins. Mm -hmm. So we all me too. always, right. So, but with me, so I can remember it, I put it in my notes. Right. I have it written down somewhere, you know, but that's only accessible if you can get into the iPhone. So um, anyways, um, I did have access access to it at one point when we broke up. I literally deleted everything off of my phone. I let him know I was doing that. I told him if you need help resetting the password, I will let I will help you. He refused to take the help. Um, and the craziest thing is his manager um, him, they have not once contacted me and asked me for anything, not one time um, since they made that statement, the original statement. Have they said, hey, do you have his password or whatever? Right. So um, I just didn't want to get into the back and forth. Well, Sabrina, I do want to say I'm sorry that things didn't work out. I know a lot of times we go into these relationships and we do not anticipate all the drama and how things could possibly come to an end. Like you fall in love and you think this is it. And then you never think that the person that you fell in love with, that it could end up like this. You know, so I do want to say that I am sorry that things didn't work out for you. So for well, you I guys. I appreciate that. Do not feel sorry for me. To any I'm not feeling degree. sorry for you, but I'm just saying I'm sorry because I know we never yeah. get into a situation thinking it's, it's going to go as left bad. publicly. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not easy to publicly because people have painted you as the bad person. You know, yeah. like she's manipulative yeah. and she's taking advantage of a situation. She's clout chasing. Right. You know, how do you respond when people say things like that? I don't. Mm -hmm. I do not respond. I just continue to operate in my world, in my space. And it's working out very well for me, to be honest. Um, I think the more that I try to combat, which I haven't, but I, when I first, first, first saw the stuff about the passwords, my manager was literally like, is there anything you can post to show that you don't have that on your phone? I said, sure. After I posted that, I was done. I was like, it doesn't matter what he says moving forward, as long as there's nothing directly about my kids. I am not responding to anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I am just not doing it because my focus is on myself. That right. is it. And the more I continue to engage with people on social media that could talk to me in real life, the more I'm moving in the um, opposite direction, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm really just moving forward. So I continue to have forward momentum when I do not respond.
Right. Why do you think Matt Barnes had something to say about you? But and you responded to him. He was one of the only people I did see you respond to. But uh, yeah. you know, what you think made him say something? I think it's what I said it was that he liked men. Oh. And that is what I told him. I think yeah. only someone that is bisexual or homosexual would want to personally say something to a woman that they have never met and know nothing about. I think that is a very female, a feminine trait, 100%. Well, he probably was really just sticking up for his boy. That's what I was about to say. You don't but, think he but, but, but he, that's not his boy, but that's not his boy. That's not his boy. And so that, and I actually had a personal conversation with him after that. Cause if that was your boy, where were you during other moments? when I was his only boy. You get what I'm saying? So where were you at when Kobe passed? Where were you at when he was feeling some type of way about people find out that he sold his rings? You know, like, don't be his boy just because you see a girl dancing. I mean, it was, there's so many opportunities you could have showed up to be his boy, is all I'm saying. So it's easy to say, oh, this is my boy, but no, it's not. You don't even have his phone number. You don't even know how to reach him. Mm. Now, let me ask you this. So you haven't watched the episode yet, right? I have not. So are you going to watch it on January 30th when it comes out? I am. I'm really who, excited about it. Who are you watching with? Um, my friend Jasmine, who's actually on the episode. I, I'm sure she's on there. I don't know um, how much of her is on there. Um, her family, uh, just some close friends. Um, and that's probably it. Like just a very intimate setting. I'm kind of anxious. I don't want to be out around a lot of people because I really feel like watching my mom is going to make me emotional. Yeah. <laughs> so it will. Um, mm -hmm. It will. Okay. Well, yeah. So um, just a lot, just around some really close friends and family. So are you, you feel, okay. I was going to ask you, did your friends and family, how did they feel about your relationship? Were they ever like, I don't know about this one. Cause it, they're very, they said obviously, that about somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> the guy that you were um, with before. <laughs> Yeah, so um, some of them were kind of like, all right, Sabrina, <laughs> what are we doing here? You know, how, how long are we doing this? And um, others, the more seasoned, were kind of like, you know, push through, give it some time, things can change. Um, but the thing is, like, they knew the very intimate details of the relationship because they were here and you know Lamar was living with me in Cleveland Ohio so they saw everything mm -hmm. um and so well I'll say this when we broke up like they were not surprised mm -hmm. and they just really wanted to see me happy and like they definitely are seeing that now like you know you focus so much on another person that you kind of lose yourself and um I did a good job with you know, continuing to work out and self-care and those things. But it's like, just like my spiritual self, my emotional self, you know, gets lost in trying to support this relationship, you know, and support the person you're in a relationship with. So I don't have to be concerned with that anymore. So I really just really get to focus on me. And I just kind of forgot how dope I can be at times. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just being honest, you know, like, wow, I forgot I do this. And I forgot I am this, you know, like, because it hasn't been about me. Um, so that's just been enjoying for them to watch and just like refreshing for me to feel. You now, in the what? beginning, y'all wasn't having sex. And do you do that no. when you get into relationships? Do you be like, all right, no, we're not going to have sex until a certain amount of time. Or did you just try that with him? Um, every relationship has been different. Um, this one in particular, I decided I was going to wait because I just heard about his reputation, you know, and... I just no needed to see who he was, you know, and sex can kind of complicate that. Um, and I just needed to see, you know, what are you here for? You know, what will the interaction be like if we're not um, being intimate? And in the beginning, I think that's what really built a friendship for us because we spent a lot of time with each other, but was not having sex. Mm -hmm. um, so what was it that made you decide to go ahead and give him some? Give up the poom poom. Um... The ring? <laughs> no, no. When we when he proposed to me, when when he proposed to me, we were abstinent. Uh, we didn't have sex that night, any like no night around that. We were abstinent. Um, but I think it was just 
you know, he showed he was really committed to the relationship. You know, like I had a lot of boundaries. I had a lot of, no, I'm not doing, no, I don't allow. And he was just like, okay, okay, okay. Um, didn't cross those boundaries. And so I just really felt like, you know what, he's really serious. You know, mm -hmm. if he's done all of this and has not gotten anything, you know, sexually for me, he may really be serious about this. I've never gone through abstinence in a relationship. Me. So, I, <laughs> so abstinence. Oh, wow. It's, I have it. It really, it really helps you experience real intimacy. So, okay. You remove I have sex. some questions about abstinence. Okay. You can't have sex, but are there other things that you can do? Right. Like what's I mean, you can, but we chose not to because I'm just not strong enough. I'm gonna be honest. So it's like we we there, we might as well keep it going, you know. Mm. So for me, it was just like let's not even play around with it. That's not but you can cuddle, you can cuddle, you can spoon, you can suck toes. Yeah, so so those are all <laughs> intimacy. Like those are all intimate, <laughs> like real intimacy. Um, that's why I say you experience real intimacy when you're not having sex. You know, um, there were times we would just fall asleep, hold hands, you know, like imagine the connection you created doing that. Um, and so it's powerful. It's not easy, especially when you're living together and spending so much time together. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you understand the purpose of why you're doing it, then uh, and you focus on that end goal, then it actually becomes really, really, really a powerful force in your relationship. Can you, dry, long of a, can you dry hump? No, dry <laughs> humping. How long, how long was that time frame that you guys were abstinent? Oh, man. Um... We weren't even together that long, so it was, um, let's see, we met in June. So I would probably say like a total of like four or five months. Okay. That's and a then long it, time. That's a period. Yeah, that's a long And y'all were together a lot, so. Yes. We were always together. <laughs> but then y'all yeah. did break up and get back together, right? Mm-hmm. That was kind of like, we did that a couple times, like, um, you know, Sometimes when I'm upset, like I'm a quitter, I'd be like, just get out. I'm done. You know, mm -hmm. like check, block you, you know, like in my anger, I don't want to fight. I just want to be done. Um, but when that statement was put out, that was kind of like the starting point of me being like, I'm exiting this relationship, you know? And then um, I had an ultimatum that I gave him after that statement was put out. And I said, you know, there's only one thing you can do for us to get back together. And he said, whatever I got to do, I'll do it. He decided to do that. And then when it came down to the time he was supposed to, he didn't do it. And so that is when I was literally like, okay. What was it? Was just, yeah. What was it? I just don't want to say, um, <laughs> because again, it will start a lot of back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, I think my statement that was put out was kind of clear that we were having some troubles in some areas and our lifestyles just were not the same. And so it was like, you know, I need you to change this area of your lifestyle. And if not, then I can't move forward with this. So, um, you know, decisions had to be made and I was able to walk away with in peace. Mm -hmm. So you don't think this is another instance where maybe I uh, break up and get back together because he did say he loves you. Oh, I 100% have no desire to ever revisit the situation with Lamar Odom. 100%. Right. What about, how do you explain, and normally we start our show off at the tip of the day. So as somebody who's just been through this, right, how, the tip of the day for today, we want you to give our listeners is how do you know when it's time to walk away from something when you've given it your all and you're like, I can't do anymore? When you just have no peace. And, and I, I think a good indication of not having peace is like when you're just not acting like yourself, you know, and we all know what that looks like. You'd be like, I can't believe I just did that. I can't believe I just said that, you know, like mm -hmm. when you're just not yourself, right? you know, which means you just have no peace. And so um, and anything. So that is a good and that could be early on. You know, every woman has a threshold. Everyone's time frame is different. You know, the things I put up with. I know women that could have went through that for years. I know women that would be like, uh-uh, the first sign of that. Right. Uh, you know, so everyone's threshold is different. You have to understand where yours is. But the moment I knew, like, I can no longer go on with this happening is when I knew it's time to find an exit route. I agree you know? with you on that because there is... Um... 
for myself too. I I also feel like when I'm not acting like myself, when I'm arguing, when I'm like depressed more than normal, mm -hmm. when I'm more sad than happy, I'm like, this is not me. Like this mm -hmm. is not who Correct. I am as a person. When I'm not like, you know, fulfilling my obligations and things that I have to do because I'm more concerned about that person than I am about yes. my own responsibilities. Yes. I'm like, this isn't a good situation for me. 100%. And it was kind of, um, you know, I can't say how he felt because I haven't spoken with him and the interviews and things he's done, I haven't listened. But for, for me, I just knew, you know, I tell people this all the time. You have to ask yourself a question in a relationship. If the current situation doesn't change, will you be happy? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we stay in things in hopes of, you right. know, this may get better. I hope this works if, you know, and so the reality is it may not, you know, it may remain that exact situation. So if the answer is no, I won't be happy. Then you're forced to make a decision, you know, and um, Lamar knows more than anyone our truths of what happened, why we split. Um, that's why I said I'm allowing him to say whatever narrative he wants. Yeah. Um, because I do know men have egos, you know, um, and he's Lamar Odom, you know, he's a legend. He has to remain, he has to look good. You know, his image cannot be tainted by a woman. How, how dare I, you know? Mm. So, mm. um, whatever he needs to say that makes him, you know, support that image. I rock with it. Do you still I love him? Because he, he said he still loves you. Do you still love him? Oh, yeah, I, I do. I love him a lot. He was my friend. You know, um, there are times I'm just concerned for my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, I do. People send me stuff all the time. Um, there has still been some form of contact through people. And as a friend, my heart goes out to him sometimes because no man who says I love you, who proposed, who wanted to get married, who I'm, you saw the interview. I'm sure he spoke very well of me. He did. Who really felt the, that way is happy that the situation has ended. You know, there could have been some grief, some sorrow, some something. And because I don't see him going through any of that at any point, um, my heart goes out because I'm like, wow, you can't really feel. You know, um, I went for about three weeks. I grieved. I'm being honest. You know, yeah. I put up a post like, the first week, I'm not getting out of bed. Somebody needs to come get my daughter, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. because I'm I'm a wreck. I'm a mess, you know. Um, heavy with my therapist, you know, very honest and transparent with my friends, just going through the motions in my mind. I mean, I went through a heavy grieving process where, like, I'm not going anywhere. I don't even want to get up and look cute because it's going to force me to just get busy and, you know, create a false reality. So that first three weeks, and this was three weeks before the world found out, right? Mm -hmm. We had been broken up. People found out when he made that, well, when it was on his page about the passwords. Right. Um, and But I was like, by then I was like, I'm over it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not even grieving anymore, you know? So it was good timing for me because that could have hit me like right. a can of bricks, you know? And I was just like, bye, y'all. <laughs> you know, if you ain't got no passwords by now... You know, um, but I truly, with my friends and family, grieved, you know, the loss of my friend, the loss of the interaction him and I had. You know, he was staying in my house. You know, my daughter was attached to him. It was a holidays. You know, we were just together on Thanksgiving, you know. So um, once I got through that process, it was just like, you know, yes, I do. I am concerned for my friend at times. Um, if I hear anything positive, I'm happy for my friend. Um, the love will probably be there forever. You know, I literally would love to look up and see Lamar one day and be like, wow, look how well he's doing, you know, and that's it. What would be a lesson that you can say that you learned from your experience in this relationship that you would take with you moving forward to a new relationship? Um, you know, you just ha I would say when someone appears to be unhealthy, you just have to allow them to go get healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, like, don't you, try you to... You can't fix it. Don't try to fix yeah. it. Yeah, and, and there were times where I think people think I tried to fix him. What I tried to do, I would ask Lamar, what is it that you want to do? And he would tell me, and i said, say, okay, well, let me support you in that. 
-hmm. You know, even if it was getting back into shape, he told me all the time, I want to play basketball again. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's go to the gym. You know, every morning, there were times I would wake him up at five. We go to Lifetime. Um, I would make him do 250 makes, not shots, makes. I would count all the makes. I would count all the misses, misses. I would calculate his percentages. We would run a mile. We would go lift later because it's what you told me you wanted to do, you know? Um, and if that changed, okay, well, I don't want to do this anymore. Let's do this. Okay. I'm just going to support you in whatever it is you want to do. You know, that's, that's healthy, right? Because obviously with him not being in the NBA, he's figuring his life out. Like a lot of guys do. What is it that you want to do moving forward? What is going to be the thing that makes you money? You know, um, let's figure that out and let me support you in that. As long as it makes sense, you know, on both ends of the spectrum. Um, what kind of dad do you want to be? Let me help you figure that out. So it wasn't just like, Lamar, this is broken. You got it. You know, like I wanted him to be him, but the unhealthy areas, when I saw what those were, I should have made a conscious decision then to say, this probably isn't going to work for me. Right. You know, um, because. I have trauma because of this. You know, I grew up in that environment. Um, it doesn't allow me to be myself when I see you doing certain things. Um, and I don't know if you're going to stop. Mm -hmm. So I hope I hope you will. <laughs> I pray you will. You know, um, I think you will. But all of that is not you did. You know, so it should have been, hey, until this happens, you know, we can revisit the situation. The problem was when I got out with Lamar, I let him know, you know, I have a, I have a problem with drugs, period. You know, I don't like to operate around it. I don't like to be around it. I don't want my kids around it. Right. Um, and that includes weed. And you, you had know, to, because you did have your own issues that you went through when you were right, hospitalized. You were younger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And even though I didn't feed myself morphine, you know, it was still in my system and it was something I became very dependent on. And um, and then growing up in a, you know, abusive environment. But because of that, um, I expressed to him, that's a problem for me, you know. Um, so he stopped, you know. So when you have a man that's just so willing to do or not do things to make the relationship work, you kind of a little bit more patient. Mm -hmm. um, but the truth is men can't do things to make you happy. They, they have, have to do, to do makes things them happy. Right. because it makes them happy or for them because happy. they're ready to do it, you mm -hmm. know, and that can be confusing because it kind of appears the same because if you stop smoking, you stop smoking, you know, right. um, but I really needed to revisit. Well, I needed him to visit with a therapist because I didn't want to be the therapist, like mm -hmm. get into therapy right. and figure out why you, you know, have to do this or feel the desire or, or unable to stop. And um, that, that just didn't, that didn't, that didn't happen. That wasn't the end result. But it, so, so the drugs didn't stop. Um, <laughs> that's what we're getting from this. It was that he still was using, and drugs. you know, people say things too. Like we've seen the drink champs interview and people felt like, you know, he was going through something. And even again, like I said, I interviewed him the other day and the comments was like, is he high now? So is, is that, you know, is that still an issue, you believe? I don't know what Lamar is doing. I have not spoken to him. Mm -hmm. So I cannot speak on what he's he's dealing with right now, currently. If he calls you, know. would you if he calls you, would you answer? Do you believe that he doesn't call me? Oh, okay. So he has been calling you. <laughs> you just, like okay. I said, I am going to allow his narrative to be his narrative, mm -hmm. right? Because Despite the rumors of what people want to believe about me, you know, my truth is my truth. And, you know, when you're like innocent, like you don't really have to. I mean, I'm not in court, you know, so I don't feel the need to defend myself to strangers. Right. Like, who am I talking Good to saying this stuff? You know, like, you know, so my friends and family, they know, <laughs> you like everyone knows that that matters, I'll say. And um, I do also feel like, you know, I don't know if this was. Lamar's character before to be so outspoken with these type of things, you know? Um, and so to me, it just seems like you just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. And so go ahead and tell whatever story you got to tell to be heard. You know, I'm just not going to combat it. I also don't want to say anything negatively about him to even start that whole back and forth. You know, Sabrina, um, 
What did you learn about yourself from all this and what you want moving forward in a partner? It's funny that you say that because um, the shade room had like posted like name the qualities you want in a man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was commenting on the shade room way before I ever was on the shade room. So I was mm -hmm. like, oh, OK. Everybody murdered me. <laughs> oh, Lord, you can't say anything no more. Right? <laughs> I didn't see right. it. What did, like, what did you, what'd you say? So um, I put healthy, sober. <laughs> oh, um, Lord, girl. Shape, okay. Shape, shape for the yeah. shade room. OK. Right. And they were like, and I was rich. Like, but, but, but that's what I learned, you know, like that's what I learned. No, it didn't have anything to do with finances. No, because um, I know you called him broke. <laughs> I did not. Who didn't you broke? say something about him being broke? See, this is bad as hell. I don't know. I read it on one Find of the blogs it. that you said Find he was it. broke. Find it where I said that man was broke. Okay. Find it. Um, and Are you serious? Because I will try. Uh -huh. No, right. when people when 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 people say that, I'm like, show me, show mm -hmm. me where I said that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think anything I say though, they think is about Lamar. Right, <laughs> you know, right. like I've been posting quotes way before hit me. Like it's just it's who I am. But um, so healthy, sober. Yes, I can remember the other two things that I um, but I wrote. But and healthy for me, I, I'm an athlete. I want to work out. You know, I like to play basketball. It's it's what I do, you know, so I need that in a partner. That's what I need. You know, mm -hmm. if, if I'm getting up going to the gym and you're not, that bothers me. Right. You know, like I need us to be on the same page with that. That's kind of what I mean, like healthy, you know, like care about your health, um, care about what you put in your body. Eating habits. Yeah, mm -hmm. and all of that, because. You know, I don't want to be eating, you know, spinach, rice, and vegetables, and then it's like I have to fry you chicken. You know, I've no. been in situations <laughs> like that. It's like it's just I gotta it fry not. you chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then I'm at the hospital with you because you are your arteries are clogged, hmm. or now you have, you know, like because there's side effects to everything. You know, as you get older, so um, just someone that already understands, you know, a healthy body, a healthy mind. You know, mm -hmm. it's all equates to self love um sober like people being high and just needing to be high like that just doesn't work for me right you know because i don't get high so if you're getting high well then what am i doing but what about a re recreational marijuana like every now and then somebody smokes weed could you do that or no yes i've done that before okay. um and i and i don't think everyone that smokes weed is an addict mm -hmm. but an addict smoking something is a problem. You right. know, most addicts should probably not do anything, you know, um, and I learned that from my mom, you know, as you know, from the show, she struggled with addiction. She won't drink, she won't do anything because everything triggers the addict's brain to go back to, you know, it's kind of like how they fill a void, how they deal with trauma is getting high. Right. So anything could be a trigger. So um, that's a problem. But people doing recreational, absolutely. I mean, I smoke hookah. I mean, I nothing, but it's like, it's, it's such a good healthy. girl. She's like, I smoke hookah. Not, not the healthiest thing, That's you know. I drink wine, I drink liquor, you know, but I don't overuse it. I don't overdrink it because I'm not an addict. So that's important to me and a partner, you know. Mm -hmm. And being a good father, you know, if you already have kids, like, how do your kids feel about you? How do you interact with your children? You know, um, are they going to be upset with me because you're with me and they haven't seen you? You know, like mm -hmm. these things matter. Right. You know, um, you did know, you just, meet, did you meet his kids? Oh, his. Um, oh, plenty of times. His daughter was at the engagement party. OK. Um, you know, Destiny and I actually spent some time with each other. Um, LJ, not as much. Um, and rightfully so. Like, I respect their feelings, position, you know, who knows what all they went through with their dad, you know, and their mom. So um, I really just had to respect whatever their position was. But um, in reality, you know, they just want their dad, right. you know, like by themselves. Um, and so seeing him do anything outside of that is, is just challenging for them. And I saw that with the time that I spent with them. Mm. Well, Sabrina, we appreciate you for being so open and honest. And yes. I can't wait for you to see it the reaction. It gets me in trouble. <laughs> as you can see well you didn't say anything negative so. purposely like i just listen i will continue to say whatever he says just let it be the truth y'all let's let him have it <laughs> um, one day you're going to be sipping some wine and something's going to happen and you're going to be like okay now <laughs> <laughs> no i have been tempted 
I have been tempted, but this is why it's important to have good people around you because mm -hmm. they say like, okay, what are going to be the results of this? Is he even in a position to be honest? You know, is he even speaking for himself? You mm -hmm. know, he has some people around him right now that are very vocal, you know, so um, is it even worth it? So I think what I portray on my page is really who I am. You know, mm -hmm. if you scroll down before Lamar, you'll see me doing the same thing. Literally, you know, exercising, playing basketball, dressing up, being cute, motivating, empowering women, selling tea, selling waist trainers. It's just it's just what I what I've done. And so I'm still that person. OK, well, well, listen, we already saw it, but I know people are going to be watching and weighing in when that mm -hmm. episode airs. Yeah. But I did appreciate learning more about you as a person, because I know you were thrust into the spotlight. Mm -hmm. just because of who you of were who dating. You but now right. we get to see who you are as a person. Unexpectedly, I might add. Right. <laughs> Unexpectedly, I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't you tell me this is what you were about to do? <laughs> um, I could have been a little bit more prepared for it, but it happened. It is what it is. Um, was it good for business for you as a trainer and like working with people? Was it at least good for business? In the beginning, no, because I was overwhelmed with orders and I just was not like equipped. I didn't have the team prepared. for it. Right. Oh my God, I was so unprepared. I was like, that day he posted me, I had like 500 orders. <laughs> I was, wasn't was even with my work stuff, but I was in LA with him. I'm like, we gotta hire somebody. I gotta, you know, try to figure this out. But it actually taught me how to be a better businesswoman, how to um, operate better in customer service, you know, and also told me like, well, I have some really good products. Mm -hmm. You know, like people, there's a need for what I'm selling. Um, mm -hmm. and then there was a time when Lamar really supported what I did and really pushed my brand and my, my products. So, um, I think people really can't remember that Lamar Odom, but, um, <laughs> that helped because it was like, it was a, the person I was with was very supportive of what I had going on. Yeah. I'm a big That's fan of always looking at the bright side of things. At right. least this mm -hmm. came out of it. At least I learned this. At least I know more about myself. At least business. Well, listen, being with him got me on this show on the own network, you know, mm -hmm. to talk about my life. The concept of the entire show is amazing, you know, to highlight the phenomenal women in these men's lives. I mean, I just love that to have been chosen to be one that probably wouldn't have happened this stage in my life if it wasn't for Lamar, you know, um, even there's something coming out really soon and they're going to really be able to visually see how Lamar and I acted, um, interacted with each other. Wow. So stay tuned for that. And you can't come back real life videos. Um, mm. So um, that's, that's exciting. Right. And mm -hmm. um, like really, really soon. So um, by the time this show airs on your podcast, days later, you will probably be seeing Lamar and I interacting um, in our relationship. Is, and, it hard for um, you, is it hard for you to watch that? Um. Well, I haven't seen it yet, <laughs> but... Um, of course it will be, you know, mm -hmm. because I just have to be honest, you know, that was my man. I loved him. You know, um, I thought we were going to be together forever. You know, I thought I was marrying him in November, you know, mm -hmm. so for that to be done, I would be inhuman to say it's not hard, you know, um, but I'm trying to just focus on that was a good season in my life. You know, mm -hmm. like the whole relationship was not bad, you know, because it ended doesn't mean that it was just a horrible time in my life. It was a great time in my life. Him and I had so much fun together. I've learned so much because of him. I was able to have so many different experiences that I would not have had if it wasn't mm -hmm. for Lamar and our relationship, you know, and I learned a different level of compassion and empathy, you know, dealing with a man like that. So, um, Moving into the the next relationship, I learned from my mistakes. I know how to be better. You know, I know the things that I did really well. So it's not all a lost cause, but, you know, it can be tough to watch because I'm going to be like, oh, I remember that moment. And that was a Is really good a reality day. show because you were you two were filming a reality show. So that's still coming out. It is still coming out. That's wow. Right. A few that's days about. after this. Wow. <laughs> Perfect timing, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Sheesh. so all of these shows are kind of like, these are my responses. I'll let you guys decide. Well, yourself. maybe this will be a big storyline like the Kardashians. I feel like he learned something from them when he was over there. I'm sure. No, he did learn a lot. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't really know what headspace he's in. Um, just hearing the little things that I hear. I hope it moves to a space of just 
you know, an open heart and open mind so that he can just be a little bit more at peace with the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, But either way, it'll allow these same fans to see for themselves what was Sabrina really really doing with him? You know, how Mm -hmm. were they really interacting with each other? Mm -hmm. You know, was she just spending his money or, you know, what what was really happening? You know, Um, and and when I hear the whole gold gold digger thing, it really makes me laugh. He was living with you. Because you're like, um, hello. I had to feed like, his belly. And Laurie, I said you called him broke. You if, if you said that he was running low on cash. I was trying to find the tweet. You said something like that, right? I, I see like 10 articles. I didn't click on that. it though. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm I gonna did look for. Are, I'm gonna tell you what people are referencing. Okay. There was a Tyler Perry quote that I reposted that said oh. before you get married, you have to learn people in all four stages when they're happy, angry, sad, and broke. There we go. That's and it. so I, remember I reposted that. that and then I added to it, you definitely learn who a person is when they're broke. Ooh. That is what I said. That sounds like shade, girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but and it was Shay- right after they announced we broke up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't the timeline, but but shade to who? You know, it could have been shade to a family member. And, you know, it could have been right. shade to a coworker. An employer that I had. I think it's right. the you know timing. You know, yeah, it is. It's right. the timing so for people to Anything split. I say right now is like, you're talking about Lamar. <laughs> you right. Know? You're like, I have so, other things going on. Uh-huh. Right. 100%. You know, so that's why I say, like, I never said that, you know. Um, okay. But I, but people will be able to see what's true and what's not just based on how he lives, how I live, you know, what the situation was. Um, and I... It's kind of productive for me to say anything negatively about him. I'm just going to be honest. Well, your house looks nice from what we it's can nice. see. Are you in Ohio? <laughs> right. I am. I'm in Cleveland, Cleveland, Ohio. Remember how much fun we had in Cleveland? We Laura? had a we great had a time in Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland is really dope. Yeah, we I'm did have a good time that, in Cleveland. I'm glad you said that because people be like, what's in Cleveland? I'm like, if you hood. really go to the I didn't want to be. Hood. It's some hood shit happening in Cleveland. Don't get twisted. No, now. but we we were in that downtown area where they yeah. have all the nice restaurants and lounges. It was nice. It was I thought I had to leave there. Yeah, DJ <laughs> Steph Floss. We got to. Um, oh, you know DJ Steph Floss. Yeah, we all do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my guy. I've known him since I was like five years old. Wow. Oh, well, yeah, that's yeah, who well, we were with in Cleveland yeah. a few times. <laughs> you go back a little further. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, he's from Shaker, you know, from the um, documentary, the show. I'm from Shaker as well. So he was going to school there when I was going to school there. Um, yeah, he's a really good friend of mine. And he be he doing all that, too. and he does all that running, and he does. Um, he's yep. Big. I used to be. I used to be part of his. It's called Run with the Winner. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to be a part of that group before I moved to Atlanta. Since I've moved back and the whole COVID thing, I don't even think they've had it going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he is vegan, so I love that he's thinking about his health now. <laughs> Uh, and he doesn't DJ as much anymore either, so he's not drinking as much as he used to. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, he but definitely yeah, got like, us toe up. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Every yeah, time. Yeah, it'll be shot after shot after shot. With mm-hmm. bottle well, we seen bottle. on the documentary, I wanted to say that you did a little bid too. So yeah. like when you was in there, how did you make the time pass? I know you you able to keep your legs closed, but was the girls hitting on you in there? <laughs> you know what? I think I just had a aura where it was like, don't try me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like, and but I was also, they nicknamed me like the librarian. Like oh, I just wow. was, busy reading, you know, like you couldn't do where I was, the facility I was in, like you couldn't exercise, you can't go outside. There's literally nothing to do. And the facility is overpopulated. So we were on something called red zone, which means you just can't come out of your room because there's not enough inmates to staff ratio, right? Right. So Mm. you either will lose your mind (laughs) or you'll find something to do with your mind. And so my dad was the one that actually was, because he's done a lot of time, was the one able to guide me on what to do, you know, um, to not lose your mind and to not become an addict. Because a lot of people, they just go to the med cart, they get something to deal with their anxiety, their right. depression, and they get out mm-hmm. and they still are and looking for that, that, that medicine. Drugs. Mm-hmm. So he taught me, stay away from the med cart. I don't care what you do. Don't, give, don't have them give you anything and find something to focus on. And so I focus on reading Self-help books, books on finance, business is actually where I came up with the whole get up to par name mm-hmm. and business when I was incarcerated. And I read over 55 books in six months. Wow. Amazing. And I just, yeah. And and I wasn't a reader before, you know, but it was like, okay, I have to do something. I became addicted to 
send me the next book, you know? Um, and so that is what I did. That is how I passed time. And then I started writing my own book. So I wrote about a hundred pages of it. You know, my life story, why I went to jail, what was happening while I was in jail, which I will finish very soon. Uh, amazing story because it'll go into detail of like just what happened. Um, while respecting my ex-husband because he's such a great man. He's a great dad. Um, but just really talking about me. So this will be like the extended version of um, my episode on Behind the Man. So And, and then you came home jail. and got an amazing shape too, which you I love. You know what I'm about to say. Gigi went to jail for a week and came and home had with a whole girlfriend. girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I did not. <laughs> I, y'all so always He told her she still loves her. So y'all come, are always come find exaggerating. Her. You found you somebody in there? Come find a book. I just, I just let her like, do things for me with her mouth sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But see, like, I was I couldn't get past like the nasty environment. <laughs> like to honestly, she likes like, it nasty. Look. Yeah, Gigi <laughs> was like, <laughs> I get on my nerves. <laughs> they throw you under the bus. I was more All so like, way. I didn't even want to touch myself. <laughs> like I couldn't shave, whack. You know, it was just like right. like. This ain't the season for that. You know, like <laughs> and so then it taught me like if I can go six months without doing a thing. Oh, I'm good out here in these dating streets. You mm-hmm. know, like they can't, they can't bribe me to do anything, you know? Right. So um, all of it worked out for the best. It made me stronger. I learned a lot. Um, that's another season of my life, you know, that I'm very transparent about. People try to use it against me. And I'm like, I've been posting my own mugshot way before you knew who I was. Yeah. You know, like, right. I'm okay with this. But they literally will be like, you, he should have never been with somebody that went to jail. You know, like people so, are always so um, judgmental when right. they should really just mind their business. The problem is their business is so hurtful for them. Like they can't even tap into their own business, you mm-hmm. know? So they have to be over here with me or them or whatever. And like, that's just the reflection of self, you know, mm-hmm. um, when you're just ugly inside, you just have to find something ugly about other people. And I've really learned that. So I promise you, I do not take it personal when strangers right. face certain Like, you don't even know me. And people just be assuming things and saying crazy oh, they, stuff. They know me. They know everything about me. <laughs> Let them tell it, right? <laughs> they were in our bed. They know exactly what money was being spent, what we were doing. You know, so I think it's just funny when they say, like, you did this with him. Like, when? Are you were there? You there? <laughs> <laughs> So that's why the show is going to be so dope because it's literally going to show what they us. think they know mm-hmm. when yeah, they don't gonna, know. Just, and, and I'm so real on there. Like there's days like I'm not putting on makeup. I'm wearing my Nike hat. You know, like I'm really myself, you know, right. every day. I'm not trying to be the cute girl that's on the TV. Like, you know, I'm operating with business, you know, on my son and just all this stuff. I was really like, I want this to really be my reality mm. or I'm not doing it. You know, and that's the most powerful thing about the whole thing. So I can't wait for you guys to see that because I'm sure we'll be talking soon right, once I you guys see it. it. Yes, we will. And uh, DJ Envy's on there too with his wife, Gia. So I can't wait for their episode. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> All I'm right, well, to watch that one. Well, Sabrina, thank you so much. We appreciate you again for being so transparent and open yeah. about everything. And we are wishing you the best. We can't wait to see who you end up with next. Right. Well, I'm going to tell you this. Is that you're ready for? Are you ready to move on to a new relationship? Or do you feel like you need to take some time off of love before you take that step again? Oh, I'm definitely not ready um, at all um, because I'm struggling with like just trusting who people are, you know, but there is someone that I'm getting to know. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> and, you know, um, he, he, you know, he checks off some boxes. Which is good. You know, those things I mentioned earlier, Uh the things that I need, Uh those qualities. Um, And so just literally getting to know, you know, who he is. Yeah, he's not checking off your box yet. (laughs) Oh, there's nothing happening with these boxes. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so and just learning like, okay, even if it's really exciting in the beginning, just learning how to slow that down, Mm -hmm. you know. It's always exciting in the beginning. Always, right? Mm -hmm. That's the best Uh, part. and it's so exciting. Like you ignore the red flags, the flags just be waving. You'd be like, but I'm having so much fun. <laughs> you know, I don't want to see that. So my therapist, she does a really good job with just giving me other things to think about and focus on um, to kind of negate the excitement of getting to know someone, you know, like 
keeping me in touch with reality, um, you know, continuing to focus on me, my needs, um, just different practices because she was a part of our relationship. And she was like, this time we gonna get to know this person. You right. know, when she saw everything happening, she was like, I can't believe Lamar would do that, would say that. And I was mm-hmm. like, neither did I, right. you know, obviously we didn't know this man. So just that part is the part was scared that I'm like, I'm not ready because I don't trust what you're saying to be true yet, you know, and that's not his problem. It's my problem. You right. know, that's my insecurity. So I have to do the work to get in a place where I can be like, okay, you're ready. Exactly. What you're saying is what it is. And even mm-hmm. if it isn't, I'm in a healthy enough space to respond to it. So that'll come later. Um, I have so many things going on. The show's coming out that I just did a sneak about. Um, my skincare line is coming out. My athletic apparel line is coming out. Oh, you've been um, busy, busy. Yes. Yeah, like I'm literally right. in talks with the chemist now. Get to the bag. Uh, full skincare line, you know, cosmetics line. Um, you know, rebranding my whole Sabrina Park Fitness. So that's all day, every day, you know? So to have time for a man, it's like, I really have to make it, Mm -hmm. to be honest. And I haven't had like a week of no Lamar Odom news yet, which is important. Like, yeah, and it's it's not not gonna happen anytime soon. (laughs) I know. So it's like, that's important to under, to consider. Like, I mean, space where it's just like wow there's been nothing about lamar today you know like no time soon sis i know i know but that's important for me to move on to the next chapter it's like Mm -hmm. and i'm not talking about the stuff that may be on his page i'm talking about like in my personal life the Mm -hmm. things that he's not going to mention and be honest about that are happening and being said it's like i need that to clear up before I can really say I'm in this next relationship, you know, right. because that may cause some insecurities with any guy. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, we still got to having to do this on the phone, you know? So um, you're right. It's not going to happen anytime soon, but God willing, it will happen. Yes, <laughs> like mm-hmm. it'll just, he'll just be gone somewhere and it'll, I'll be it'll like, fade wow. away and you can be able to move on in a healthy environment and you're gonna look back and be like damn i went through some shit it's the lessons it's the lessons Always. as long as you can take the the life for its lessons and learn from it and move on it's never a loss it's a lesson at least well, that's how i feel Sabrina, we appreciate you so much again behind every man. And then we're looking forward to what we are going to watch the reality show too and see how mm-hmm. that plays out. Yes, so, that's exciting. But, <laughs> but much support to you and much love. Yes. Thank Good you luck so much. With all Angela. of your ventures and everything you got going on. Thank you. Same to you, Gigi. Thank you, baby. Bye, guys. All right. Thank Lip you. Service. Bye.